next speaker is Stephen Larson, and he's going to be talking to us about how you would evolve artificial intelligence. So uh, let's hear from Stephen. Thanks. Uh, my name is Stephen Larson, and I'm a PhD candidate in neuroscience from the University of California, San Diego. And I'm going to tell you how we can get one step closer to building general artificial intelligence by simulating worms in computers. So when I say general artificial intelligence, I'm referring to something like Lieutenant Commander Data from the Star Trek Next Generation series. He was generally intelligent because he was able to hold conversations and solve problems and process information about the things that were going on him in a human-like way. Uh, right now, artificial intelligence isn't that smart. We can do some things fairly well. For example, IBM built a chess playing computer, Deep Blue, which beat chess grandmaster Gary Kasparov at his own game. We're also able to build systems that do things like solve 20 questions pretty well. However, neither the chess playing computer or the 20 question player is anything that you would confuse for Lieutenant Commander Data. And why is that? Well, one of the problems is that we're really bad at building systems that process information to solve problems in general. The things that human beings are able to do to uh, see the information that's around them and integrate it together and come up with new creative strategies is something which still eludes artificial intelligence. So in my own research, I've wondered if there's a way for us to study what's going on inside of our own brains and if that might hold the key or at least clues in order to understand how to build general artificial intelligence. Uh, unfortunately, that part's pretty hard too because our brains are extremely complex. There's a whole lot of stuff going on between our ears and uh, although neuroscientists are doing a lot of great work in trying to piece all that together, mainly the problem is one of complexity. There's a lot of stuff in there, a lot of stuff between our ears and there's a lot of it to keep track of. And so one of the things I've been doing in my thesis project is uh, building three-dimensional models of the structure of brain that allow us to pull that data together under something that's being called the whole brain project and thankfully that's being a bit recognized is something that's leading the way in helping us pull together this kind of data and hopefully that will uh, lead to some progress. The reason that we want to pull this data together ultimately is so that we can simulate the activity that we see inside this tissue. So work like uh, that that, that's being done by the Blue Brain Project, uh, Henry Markham leading that off, and Terry Sanofsky at the Salk Institute, they're simulating the tissue of, of brain cells in order to understand something about how they process information. Um, but there's one thing that they don't do, and that's something that they could learn from artificial intelligence, which is embodiment. So this guy here, Rodney Brooks, came into the MIT AI lab in the 90s, and he said, we should build robots, and we should embody things, and we should have systems that work in the world. So what I mean by embodiment is that you could take a, 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 a robot like this one here, which uh, vacuums your floor, and it has to solve the problem of operating in the real world. It has to dodge cats, and it has to dodge babies, and at the same time, it has to vacuum your floor and do that. And the, and the process of building systems that uh, do that is, is essentially the same as what your brain has to solve every day. It has to walk your body around the world. Well, neuroscientists would love to study the brain in the context of the body. But unfortunately, that's a very difficult thing to do. So how can we help them? Well, I say let's build bodies inside computers. This is already being started uh, in the process of doing things like building crickets. However, even a cricket, which is still pretty simple, isn't simple enough. So what do we do? I say we build worms. Yes. Wow. So, worms. So we like worms. They're easy to make out of clay and... Uh, you know, they do cool stuff in video games. Okay, I don't mean video game worms. I actually mean one step beyond video game worms. And I mean we build some serious simulated worms, okay? So what worm am I talking about? There's a worm that's called the C. elegans. And the C. elegans is special. Three different Nobel Prizes have been handed out for work that's been done in neuroscience on this worm. We know a ton about this worm. We know its entire genome. We know all 1,000 cells that make up its body. We have a complete, like, blueprint-like schematic plan for where all those cells go. It's crazy. This thing is screaming to be simulated inside of a computer. And why would we want to do that? Well, so if we did that, okay, if we simulated this worm, we could essentially create, all right, a worm matrix where this guy, right, a fully simulated physical world, a fully simulated worm body, and it's 300 neurons. And if we could do that, we could start to re really reverse engineer what a nervous system does when it has to work in a world and solve the information processing problem of uh, moving that thing around. And what we could learn from that is if we have a nervous system which is fully working in that way, we could start to extract some of the key principles that we can't yet do in simulation so we can understand in general how nervous systems work. Now this is not going to be easy. This is something 
something that we need to put online and make available so people can find it and see it and a whole lot of eyes can see it. So let's open source the worm. Let's let everybody have a look at it. And if we do that, if we're able to build this kind of a simulation, right, and we're able to extract the key principles of information processing inside the nervous system, maybe we can finally get one step closer to Lieutenant uh, Commander Data and we can build information processing systems that are, are generally artificially intelligent. Thanks very much for listening. Yeah.